Got your Bible? You got your, you got your tool here today? Amen? Hold it up. Let's make the devil nervous. How about that? Let's say it together. This is my Bible. I am what it says that I am. I can do what it says that I can do. I can have what it says that I can have. Today, I will be taught the uncompromised Word of God. My mind is alert, and my heart is receptive. I'll not leave the same as I came in Jesus' name. And every time I come to Church on the Rock, my faith and my life get stronger and stronger. Give God your best shout, would you? Is that all? Is that your best shout today? Hey Amen. That's your best shout. That's awesome. I'm so proud of you. Open your Bible today to the New Testament, to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1. We begin a brand new series, a brand new year, a brand new beginning, a brand new chapter, a brand new season. We begin a brand new series this month on how to hear God's voice. How to hear God's voice. Now, maybe you're here or you wanted to be here, but you're watching online and this is your church. And you say to me, Pastor, does God speak still today? And I just want you to know, I just want to make it clear right up front that at Church on the Rock, we believe that we serve a God who's a speaking God. He's a speaking God. You see, oh, come on, Pastor, that's elementary. Not today. Because there are mainline denominations in America that don't believe that God talks today. They believe he stopped back in the book of Acts. But at Church on the Rock, we believe that we serve, that we worship, that we live for a God who is a speaking God. Now, the Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 12 that there is a way that it looks right. It seems right. Everybody around us tells it's right, tells us it's right. But the Bible says the end thereof is death, destruction, and hell. So what does that mean? That means that you and I don't have all the answers, but God does. And it may look right to us. It may sound right. Our best friends, our parents, our pastor may say it's right, but it could be wrong. So this year, I want it to be better than last year for you and for me. And this year, I don't want to repeat the mistakes. Now, you probably made none, but I made a whole bushel of mistakes last year, and I don't want to repeat them. I want to learn from them, and I want to go on, right? So I want to make better choices, better decisions. I don't want to make good ones. I want to make God ones. And so to do that, I have to hear God's voice. So I'll make God's choice. So all month, we're going we're gonna, to we're, we're, we're go through a 21 day of prayer and fasting, right? And that's going to tune our spirit to hear the voice of God. Because to hear His voice, we have to get rid of distractions. You see, for this year to be what God wants it to be, three things. There are going to have to be some things that I need to stop doing. Number two, there, there needs to be some things that I need to start doing. And, and number three, there needs to be some things that I need to keep on doing. For, for this year to be better than last year, you and I are going to set ourselves up for success, and we're going to eliminate a whole lot of voices so that we can hear the most important voice, the voice of God. So this year will be better than last year. Now to do that, we're going to have to eliminate some things, maybe relationships, maybe habits, maybe routines, maybe rituals, maybe, you know, uh, hobbies. I don't know. You know, I, I told you I was going to fast coffee on my 21 day fast. And some people laugh at that. But if you knew me, you know, I, I told Stephen, I'm not joking i need to come to celebrate recovery amen because i got a problem i really do you know i drink too much coffee way too much coffee 
I, I said I was going to fast coffee, but you know what? Really, God, seriously, I, not an audible voice, but on the inside, just felt like yeah, I did that last year. God said, no, I don't want you to do that. This year, I want you to fast social media. Oh, I want you to fast social media. You know, there are a whole lot of voices on social media. And, you know, if I want to hear, see, the most important person you're going to talk to today is God. God is the most important person you're going to talk to today. And number two, the most important second person you're going to talk to today is yourself. Self-talk. Because your self-talk creates your self-image, and you'll never rise above how you see yourself. Your self-talk creates your self-image, and you'll never outperform your self-image. You know, I'm so thankful for uh, Mark and Nikki and our youth team, and, and I'm so thankful for our youth ministry. And you heard that young lady, she talked about how she felt like she was a nobody and didn't matter. Poor self-image. Came to Church on the Rock, found out who she was in God. Amen. She was in church last night, by the way. Found out who she was in God. And she does matter. And she is important. And she is precious. And she is a treasure. And God, she can do what God says she can do. Amen. So the most important person we're going to talk to every day of our life, you talk about a morning mindset for uh, winners, is the most important person we're going to talk to every day is God. Number two is ourself. So we're going to talk this whole month. We're going to spend the whole month. So you'll, you'll let me just begin slow and build a foundation, right, this weekend, because the first weekend of a brand new year, a, a brand new month, a brand new day, a brand new season, brand new level. I'm excited because I know that I've already talked to God about you and me in this year, and he's already told me, not outwardly, but inwardly, that there are some great opportunities coming your way this year. There, there, there are some great, great, great possibilities. There are some great possibilities. Everybody say opportunities and possibilities. Uh, opportunities and possibilities. There are some great opportunities and great possibilities coming your way this year. And, and I don't want to be too busy to not hear God's voice and miss them. Nor do I want you so, so we want to set ourselves up, and, and, and we want to hear God's voice, and uh, let's just, let's just uh, give you three things right off the bat. Why should I hear God's voice? Because, Pastor, that's elementary. Doesn't everybody want to hear God's voice? No. Isn't everybody seeking God? No, I don't think so. They tell us today that America is no longer a Christian nation. It's no longer a Christian nation. That's why we're fasting, right, for revival. They tell us in Pew Research, only two out of ten Americans are in church this weekend. Only two out of ten are in some kind of church this weekend. America needs revival. America needs to wake up. Amen, church. And not everybody wants to hear from God. Not everybody does. The Bible even tells us that God is looking down. He's searching for people like you and me who are seeking after him. A lot of people don't even want to hear from God, don't even have any inclination or desire at all to hear God's voice. But you and I, we are unique. We are different. We are above average. We are not like the most. We are set apart. You and I want to hear God for this new year. Amen, church. And, and that's real crucial because the prerequisite, the positioning to hear God's voice, get in the frequency, get in the zone, get the service, get online, get, get, get in the right vibe, get in the right zone, is first of all, you have to want, and you have to want it bad to hear God's voice. Now, why do we want to hear God's voice? Three things, three things. Number one, why does God want to talk to you, and why does God want to talk to me? Number one, because of friendship. Everyone say friendship. You know, God wants to be your best friend. Uh, the Bible says that he wants to be a friend that sticks closer than your natural family, your natural blood, than a brother. Oh, pastor, you're making the Bible, you're bringing it down to our level. No, 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 I'm not. The Bible calls Abraham, who's the father of our faith, doesn't the Bible call him a friend? of God. 
So God wants to talk to us. We serve a speaking God, and he wants to talk to you and me today. And the most important person you can talk to today is God. The second most important person is yourself, your self-talk. And God wants to talk to you and me because he wants to be our friend. Friendship. That's huge, isn't it? That's relationship, right? That's huge. Number two, why does God want us to hear his voice? Why does God want to talk to us? Because number two, he wants to give us guidance. Guidance. I don't know about you, but I, I don't know enough to lead myself. I, I need God to guide me. I need help. I need help in every season of my life. I've needed help in every season to come. I'll need help and I humble myself today and say, God, help. God, I need your guidance. The, the, the steps of a righteous person are ordered by the Lord, not the masses, not moods, not emotions, not circumstances, not people, not trends, not the culture, but, but a wise, righteous person are led by the Lord. So number two, God, we serve at Church on the Rock, and those of you who wanted to be here and couldn't be here, but this is your church home, is that we, wanna, uh, we want to serve a speaking God, and he wants to speak to us because he wants to be your friend, friendship. Number two, he wants to give you guidance on how to be a better parent, how to be a better person, how to be a better leader, how to be a better father, mother, brother, sister, how to just to be better Christian. Uh, and on and on and on. So, number one, I forgot already. Why does God speak to us? Because he wants to be our friend. And number two, he wants to give us guidance. And number three, huge, big idea, he wants to give us perspective. Oh, my goodness. Isn't perspective everything? We respond out of perspective. We react out of perspective, how we see things. Well, we, we sometimes act too quickly, jump too quickly. Sometimes we act then speak when we should have took time to listen before we spoke. Can I have a witness in the house? So, so God wants to talk to me today because, because he has a perspective on my situation and what I'm going through that I don't have. And the devil is a master. Listen real carefully. The devil is a master at exaggeration. He always tells us it's worse than it really is. It's bigger than it really is. It's, excuse my English, all you English teachers. It's badder than it really is. He's a master at exaggeration that when we make mistakes, and we do, he tells us that God won't forgive us, that, that it's all over, that our best days are behind us, and that we've missed all of our golden opportunities. The devil is a master at, at blemishing and, and magnifying and exaggerating our circumstances. And, and you and I both know as Christians there are two worlds, right? There's the invisible and the visible well, we know there's the natural and there's the supernatural. We know that behind every, the Bible says behind leaders, did you know that? Presidents and leaders, uh, 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 governors and mayors and, and, and CEOs and CFOs and parents, behind every leader there, there's a, a spirit, good or bad, influencing them. You do know that's in the Bible, right? So because of that, because what I see is not all that there is, uh, because that I'll, I'm limited by, by my carnal mind, I'm limited by this human body, I'm limited by the natural, I need God's perspective. We call that wisdom. Wisdom. Seeing through God's eyes. Hearing with God's ears. Feeling with God's heart. So, so you and I, we, we serve a speaking God, hearing the voice of God for a brand new year, a brand new beginning, a brand new season, a year that's better than last year because we're going to hear God's voice and he's going to tell us to start some things that we haven't been doing. He's going to tell us to stop some things that we have been doing. And then he's going to tell us to keep on doing some things that we've been doing. Amen, church.
So, so we need perspective. Now, we just came back from, from California, and as many of you know, we, we, we go there every year. We like to go there. We like to go climbing and hiking in the mountains. And we were at Joshua Tree National Park. If you've ever been there, it's amazing. A lot of famous history in Joshua Tree National Park and beautiful mountains. And, and we were on a 10-mile we hike, and we were going up in the mountains, several thousands of feet of elevation. And, and, and here's what I know that at the base of the mountain I could only see so much but as we begin to climb up the mountain as I got higher I call it elevated perspective elevated perspective you and I, if we're going to win, if we're going to lead, if we're going to overcome, if we're going to influence, if we're going to leave a legacy, if we're going to make a difference. Now, we're all different, but I know we all want to make a difference. If we're going to do that, we have to live with an elevated perspective. We have to see what others don't see. We have to see what we can't even see. With God's help and so as we were climbing up the mountain it was beautiful I was doing it on my birthday it got ego pray for me but but on my 65th birthday I thought man I want to climb that mountain I want to go to the top and so so we we did and we got as we got up higher and higher we looked down and over here to 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 this side there were some guys between two peaks of the mountain on a high wire nothing below them and they were going, oh, man, looking at that perspective. Well, wow. and then over here, you know, I saw these little bitty things look like ants, but they were cars. I mean, we were several thousand feet up. It was a panoramic view. It was gorgeous. When you got to the top, there was a view at the top that I didn't have at the bottom. Let's don't live on the bottom. Let's don't be bottom feeders. Let's live with an elevated perspective. And so that's why God wants to talk to us because he sees things today you don't see. Why is my wife acting that way? Why is my husband acting? Why did my mother do that? Why did my dad leave? Why can't I get that job? Why isn't things working out? Why did I get laid off? Why can't I have friends? Why don't, why don't does anybody seem to help me or like me? You know what? God has the answers to all the things you and I go through. God knows and sees the things that we don't know and we don't see, but when we hear his voice, well, he'll give you not only relationship and guidance, but he'll give you perspective. I'm having way too much fun on my introduction. <laughs> way too much fun. But, but I'm setting you up, okay? So I've given you three reasons for this whole month, right? And why, please stay with me. And those who wanted to be here and you couldn't be here, and this is your church home, stay with me every weekend, the whole month. I'll be here every weekend. And we'll be talking about how to hear God's voice. And now we know why, right, church? The first reason was, the second was, and the third was, okay. Uh, and now let's look at Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 18. And I, I love this in the message. I ask... Ask the God of our master, Jesus Christ, the God of glory, to make you intelligent and discerning in knowing him personally. That your eyes would be what? Everyone say that again, please. Uh, say that word again. One more time. The more focused your life is, the stronger your life will be. It's like a laser beam. And we live in a world with all these voices and all these things that were overwhelmed, overcommitted, overstressed, uh, that, that we have no focus. And if we're going to finish strong, if we're going to hear God's voice, we have to focus on the most important things in our life. Please hear me out because you really got to think about what I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you four questions that are the most important questions you could ever ask. Now, I'm a big believer in asking questions. I'm a professional question asker. I ask all my peers, all my friends. And here's what I know. Through questions, you gain wisdom. Through questions, you gain wisdom. When you ask the right questions, you gain the right wisdom. And I'm going to give you the four most important questions you could ask in order to position yourself to hear God's voice. Now, now, before we do that, these four questions is going to help you and I to focus our life. Because the most important thing this year for me and our church, and I thank you, is hear God's voice. 
That's the most important thing as a Christian. And so to hear God's voice is going to take focus. And the more focused your life is, the more focused a church, like our church, we're focused, right? You know, you know the, the mission of Church on the Rock. It's to lead people to a God who's for them and help them discover His purpose for their life. I mean, we're focused. We, we've been doing that for 35 years. And then the mission of our church, it's happening in Growth Track right over here. I met them on the way into the sanctuary today. And we're focused. We know. We know the purpose of our church. And it's to help people know God, find freedom, discover their purpose, and make a difference with their life. The more focused the church, the more focused the business, the more focused the marriage, the more focused an individual, the stronger your life will be. And here's what I know. The more focused you are, and this is the Apostle Paul praying that you and I have focus. The, the more focused you are, listen very carefully, the quicker you bounce back. The, the more focused you are, the quicker you bounce back. The more focused you are, the less time you spend depressed, distracted, despondent, and defeated. The, the more focused your life, the stronger your life. The more focused you are, the quicker you get back on track. Because we all have disappointment and detours, and, and we all have... Now, now, climbing that mountain that I told you about earlier, you know, we were climbing a different mountain earlier in the week, and we were up on the top of that mountain, listen very carefully, and here came a lady, I mean, she was, she was moving, Tony. And here came a lady that she passed us, and she said, real quick, she said, you guys do know you're not going to get to the end of the path up here before it gets dark, so you better turn around and go back down the mountain. And come to find out, you know who that lady was? Barbara Eden. Wow. I dream of Jeannie. 87 years old. She's on top of the mountain, blowing us away. I mean, she's, I dream of a genie. I mean, she was a genie. I mean, Barbie, she was trucking, okay? Along with her, there were some other ladies that were behind her, and I shouldn't have been, but we were on the same trail, and I was kind of eavesdropping. Pray for me, okay? Now, you never do that today at lunch, but I, I was... I was eavesdropping, and I heard these two ladies, and here's what I heard the conversation, just a little bit of it, and, and she said to the one lady, you know, I'm just so depressed. She said, I, I just, here's what she said, I just can't, can't seem to bounce back. Celebrate recovery would help her, right, Steve? She goes, I, I just can't, I, I was listening, so under my breath, I just prayed a little prayer for her. And I thought about the message that I was preparing for for you this weekend is that, that the, the more focused your life, the quicker you bounce back. I hope you never forget that. Because if you, if you have a long time after suffering a, a setback or hurt, a disappointment, it, 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 and we all have them, if you're, if you're despondent for weeks, it's because you don't have focus in your life. Because the more focused you are, the like a laser beam, the stronger your life. The more focused you are, the quicker you bounce back from failure, mistake, delay, disappointment, depression. And the Apostle Paul, he's praying for us that our eyes would be focused so that you can see exactly what God is calling you to do. Oh, my goodness. Well, we don't know what he wants us to do if we can't hear his voice. So in order to know what he's calling us to do, we've got to hear his voice. And to hear his voice, we've got to be focused. Wow. Does that all make sense today to everybody? So he's praying here. I like it in the message, don't you? I mean, uh, the paraphrase really brings it out. That your eyes be focused. Everyone say focused. Your eyes be focused. Why? So that you can see exactly what he's calling you to do and grasp the immensity or the largeness or the bigness of the glorious way of life he has for you to live. God wants you to live an abundant life, a large life, a life that, that impacts, a life that makes a difference. I know we're all different, but I know we all want to make a difference. Amen, church. 
So, so focus. How do you focus your life? Because this is telling me that I'm not going to hear God's voice. Now, I'm coming from a whole different angle that you thought I was going to come, I was going to come from to hear God's voice. It, it, it's to hear God's voice, you've got to be focused. Your life has to be focused. Now, I'm on top of that mountain. We're back to the mountain, okay? I'm on top of the mountain. And we come back down the mountain. I get in the car, and I got a message, kind of a scolding message from my wife. And she says, where are you at, and why haven't you answered me? And I said to her, text her back real quick lovingly, "Hun, I was in a place where there was no service. I was in a place where you could not reach me. I could not hear you now. Come on, somebody. I was on the wrong frequency. I was in the dark. Come on. How many people you know, God's trying to talk to them, but there's no service. There's no connection. There's no frequency. They're in the dark. Come on, somebody. Well, Pastor, come on. Would you get to it? Time's about over. Okay, I'm... I'm trying to get to those four questions that help us bring focus into our life. They're the four most important questions as a Christian you could ask. And when you ask them, they'll bring that focus because Paul said, without focus, without focus in my life, I won't know what God's calling me to do with my life. I won't hear his voice. So let's go to John, John chapter 10. Uh, next verse, please. John chapter 10, verse 3. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep, what does sheep do? hear his voice now i want to give you a takeaway i learned this from charles caps anybody ever heard charles caps charles used to he's in heaven now he used to come to our church every year in the north campus and i learned this from charles charles said dave every day of your life you need to make this confession i am his sheep and i hear his voice and the voice of a stranger i will not listen to thank you charles so I want to give to those of you that are here and those that wanted to be here, couldn't be here, and this is your church home online, take away, start making that confession every day this year. I am his sheep. I hear his voice and the voice of a stranger. And there are a lot of strange people out there, amen, and voices I will not listen to. So it, it goes on. It says here, the gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice, and the sheep come to him, Notice we can't come to him without hearing his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name, and then he leads them out. Verse 4, verse 4, he walks ahead of them. Wow, isn't it good to know that he's already walked this year ahead of us? Boy, that's good news for me. I hope it is for you that God's already gone where he wants to take us. God's already gone where he wants to take us. He's already gone before you, and he's the way maker. And it says here that he, he walks ahead of them and they follow him because they recognize what? His voice in a world full of a whole bunch of voices. Now notice I can't be led by him. I can't follow him. I can't know the call until I can recognize his voice. So if I'm not hearing God's voice, then I'm not being led by God. And I'm going to make wrong choices. Now, we're not talking about audible outside. We're talking about impressions on the inside. Okay? So, next verse, verse 5. They won't follow a stranger on the Internet, but they will run from them, for they don't recognize their voice. Run from them. So, that's what I said for this year. God's talking to all of us. He's talking to me about there's things I need to stop. Maybe a relationship, maybe something I'm reading, something I'm listening to, something I'm watching, something I'm allowing to come into my life. There are some things that I need to stop. There are some things that I need to start. Maybe that confession that I'm his sheep, I hear his voice and the voice of a string. And there are some things that I've been doing last year that I just need to like tithing and giving and serve one, worship one, and like a lifelong learner, and, like I'm always working on my attitude. There are some things I've been doing I need to keep on doing. Come on, somebody. Okay. So uh, now what do we do, Pastor? Here's four questions, the most 
important for questions. As the team comes out, here's what they are. Because if, if you have the center of your life, if you have the center of your life right, then you'll have your life focused on point. You know, when the center of your life is centered around God. So the first question would be that, that we want to ask ourselves the four most important questions that will bring focus is that who or what is at the center of my life? Who or what is at the center of my life? Who or what? Because, see, everybody in this room and everyone who wanted to be here, couldn't be here, watching online, every one of us have something at the center of our life. Now, Pastor, I'd I like to know, you know, how do you know? Pastor, I just want to know, how do you know what's at the center of a person's life? Here's how you know. Very simple, very simple. Whatever or whoever is at the center of your life, you talk about it and you think about it all the time. Whatever or whoever is at the center of our life, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth will speak that whoever or whatever is at the center of your life, that's what you talk about all the time, and that's what you think about all the time. For some people, it's money. It's all they talk about. It's all they think about is making money. And we all know you never see a hearse with a U-Haul behind it. What does that mean, Pastor? You can't take it with you. For some people, all they talk about, all they think about is their career, their education, their degree. It's good, but it shouldn't be at the center. For some people, all they think about and talk about is their kids. They're living their life out. They didn't live through their kids. That's all they think about. That's all they talk about. For some people, it's hunting, fishing. For some people, it's investing. For some people, it's sports. For some people, whatever it is. But here's what I know, that, that we need to ask ourselves. If we're going to get our life focused, we need to ask ourselves, okay, who or what is at the center of my life? Because who or what is, whatever is there comes out through what I think about all the time and what I talk about all the time. Question, what do you think about all the time? Question, what's the dominant thought in your life? That's the center of your life. What is the thing you talk about the most when you get with your friends? That's the center of your life. And here's what I know. When you make, and I make God and Christ the center of our life, then guess what? Our life will be stronger. We'll bounce back quicker. Come on, somebody. Our life will be stronger. We'll bounce back quicker because we got solid center core. Now, I, I, many of you may know this, but when I was a kid, I had a paper route, and, and after I tithed, my dad taught me to tithe. After I tithed, you know, I went and bought beef jerky and Mountain Dew, Yahoo, and Pepsi and whatever, and then I bought some little gadget, some little thing. I'm, I'm a kid, you know, and I remember one time the Super Bowls. Anybody ever heard of the Super Bowls? Remember those Super Bowls? And I remember I went to the Five and Dime, Ben Franklin, in the town we lived in, got myself a Super Bowl. And those Super Bowls, they were awesome because you could get them. And I'd go out in front of our house on the sidewalk. I'd bounce that Super Ball, and that thing go to the moon. <laughs> Come on, it'd go over the house. Come on, somebody. Super Balls. Well, what made a Super Bowl a Super Bowl? Why would a Super Bowl bounce higher than a baseball or a basketball or a tennis ball? It was what was at the core, the center of the Super Bowl. And you know what it was? It was solid. It was condensed and solid in the center, wrapped around with rubber. And because it was solid at the center, it caused it to bounce higher than any other ball. What's at the center of your life today? There's something, there's someone. So remember, Paul said, I pray that you would have focus so you could hear his voice, so you would know his call, so you could live a large life. Glory to God. So this whole month, I'm excited. I'm really excited. Can't wait. This is going to be the best year of your life, our life, our church life. Because we're going to hear God's voice clearer because we're, we're getting in the service. We're getting in the zone. We're, we're, we're getting on Wi-Fi. Come on, somebody. Uh, how? By bringing focus into our life, by asking the question, who or what is at the center 
of my life. Number two, I got to ask myself, who am I becoming? That's character. Who am I becoming? Because, see, God's more interested in who I am than what I do. God's more interested in my character than my comfort. God's more interested that in my positioning my life to please Him or am I just out doing my own thing? If I want to hear God's voice clearer, I can't be doing my own thing. I got to be doing His thing. And I got to allow Him to work on me so I can hear His voice. I I'm rushing through them, but we'll elaborate. Is that okay? So the four most important questions to bring focus so we can hear His voice. We're getting in the zone. Remember, Pastor, zone, Pastor Kim, she chewed me out good on that. Boy, why didn't you answer me? Well, I couldn't, sweetheart, because I was where there was no service. You were talking, but it was a monologue, not a dialogue. I couldn't hear you because I didn't have the right frequency. How do you get in the frequency? You bring focus. How do you bring focus in your life today? My life is so scattered, Pastor. Number one, ask yourself the question, who or what is in the center of my life? It's what you think about, what you talk about all the time with your friends and your family. Number two, who am I becoming? And number three, what am I contributing? What am I contributing? You see, you and I don't want to live a selfish life. We want to live a significant life. Uh, we, we don't want to live a selfish life. We want to live a significant life. You and I, do, we don't live to get. We live to give. If I want God to talk to me, I'll just be honest with you. You know, I've been a Christian for 50 years. God don't talk to stingy people. The only thing God's telling to them is start being a giver. Seriously. Because God, God is a spirit and He talks to your spirit. If my spirit is stingy, my spirit is closed. This is what I know. I've been doing this for a half century. I've seen people make it. I've seen people fail. So, so I, I ask, ask myself, am I, am I coming to church today? I know y'all are. Who can I give to? I, I'm not talking about money. That's okay. You know, we all like those handshakes with some stuff in them. Praise the Lord. But, but I'm talking about a smile. A, a, a pat on the back, a hug, a, buy a coffee, buy a donut, sit with a jazz trio and just ask people, how you doing? You know, am, am I out to get or am I out to give? Amen. So, so this will center your life. This will focus your life. And my life has to be focused if I want to hear God clearly what he's calling me to do to live a large, glorious life. And then number four, number four, what is my life communicating? what what is my life communicating you know I, I found this out you that are parents i found this out kids do what you do not what you say hello in, in other words example is more powerful than anything else uh, here's what i know is that all of us in this room and all of you who wanted to be here couldn't be here and this is your church home that your life has a life message that when they think of you people think of something that's your life message. So if I want my life to get focused, if I want God to speak to me this year, if I want to go to a new level, if I want to get past last year's mistakes, if I want to turn things around, if I want to learn from the hard knocks of life, turn them into lessons, if I want to be an achiever, if I want to be an overcomer, if I want to make a difference, I have to ask myself, what is my life communicating to other people? Am I, am I rude? Am I... Uh, am I a racist? Am I unkind? Am I a penny pincher? Am I generous? Am I stingy? Am I, am I hard? Am I soft? Am I, uh, uh, what, what is my life? What's my life message? Because we all have a life message. And so what, what is that? That's living on purpose, I think, right? That's living intentional. That's thinking about what do I want people to to, now, I'll tell you, y'all pray for me because I, I got a zillion mistakes. Please don't look at my mistakes and please don't look at my bloopers and the things that I shouldn't do that I do do and, and, and all this, that, and the other. But above all of that, when it's all said and done, when people think of David Blunt, I want them to think of there was a guy, his message was he wanted people to know God was for them. 
And he wanted people to know that God had a purpose for their life. And, and right now, you pray for me. I have a publisher right now working on a book for me entitled, God is for you. And he said, Pastor, it's got to be a hardback book. It's got to be thick because that's your life message. Now, this man's known me for 35 years. And he said, when I think of you, he said, that's what I think. Now, I, I got a zillion weaknesses. I got a million bloopers. I got a long way to go. I mean, like last night, you know what I did last night when I went home from church? Connie, Connie that works in our, 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 our financial department, she gave us a bunch of brownies, Steve. I went home and ate a bunch of brownies after church last night. Now, to you, that might not be a big deal, but to me, it is because for five months, I've had no sugar. And I fell off. I need celebrate recovery. I fell off the wagon last night. And I ate me some brownies. I, I got lots of mistakes. But I want my life message to be, what is your life message? When you focus on that, that will put you in a spot where God can speak to your life more clearly. Did y'all get something today? I'm out of time. Would you give the Lord a good praise? Thank you, Lord.